Saints, as God opened up by his spirit, the book of Revelation to me, and in that one book, the first words, a revelation of the Son of God. That is what opened that book up to me. And there were many revelations in there. Revelation of him, his father, his kingdom, his people, his church, his coming kingdom, the living creatures, his bride, his wife, so many wonderful revelations that those on the broad road to destruction never see. But one of the most amazing revelations was the revelation of his name. I, like most of you, many of you, had for years thought I knew his name. My wife and I had many of the miracles that you read about in my website or you've heard on these messages. We only know, we only knew him by the name that the church uses, and that was Jesus. And Jesus is a true translation of his name. But why does the church use a translation of his name? And what is his name? If you were there in those days, and the true name of the Son of the living God, the Messiah, the Christ, the coming one, his true name is Yeshua. But you don't hear that in church. You never hear it. And your leaders and your teachers, they never whisper it. But if you find out about it and you ask them, they'll tell you they're using a true translation, that it doesn't matter. They're using an English translation. But as we use that translation and go to other countries, they don't translate it again to their language. So why has that been done in the church? It's for the traditions of men. And it's because the church is in Babylon. And in Babylon, that's the name that's accepted. In these last days, as Babylon rules the earth. It's the name that's accepted and it's the traditions of men, but you need to know his name. I tell many Christians this and they just have a fit. How can you disparage the name of the living God, the holy name, the righteous name? But that was never his name. These leaders and these teachers that hide this from you They'll tell you that that's his name, but that they use Jesus because it's a true translation. If you had a person coming to visit you, even a, not a famous person, much less a famous person, much less a king or a queen or a ruler, and they were coming and someone said to you, the a king so-and-so is coming. Would you say, well, I'm going to call him something else? When he got there, how disrespectful. How utterly disrespectful. It wouldn't be allowed. It's not done anywhere in the world. Yet the church has changed the name of the living God. The son of the living God. To another, a translation of his name. And we need to know as we're preparing for the wedding, the groom's name. His name is Yeshua. Look it up. Google it. You Google many things continuously. Don't have a fit and shut this off. 
Google it and see what the name of the Messiah is, what the name of the Christ is, what the name of the Son of the living God is. Google it, and it's going to tell you his Hebrew name. His name is Yeshua, and that it's been changed. And like I said, the Greeks changed it first. And if you see pictures, old time drawings and paintings of what they portrayed the Son of God as, as they changed his name, he looked very Greek. He looked very Greek. And in a Greek manner were the images of him made. And then later, as Christianity's moving more fully into Europe and with the Europeans, they want their own God and they want their own translation. And they change his name again to Jesus. And we've accepted that throughout most of the church age. But when you are told that that's a translation and that's the way it is and should be kept, why would you change his name? And why, as you take Christianity to other countries who have their own unique languages, Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Australian, Aborigines, why don't you change his name again to their language? Because it isn't done. And as I said, as the book of Revelation was opened up to me, and I saw these things, one of the things I saw was his name. And it stunned me that we would use another name. And I'm not saying you can't be a Christian or you're not his if you didn't, don't, or don't use his true name or don't even know it. Because before these revelations, before these most of these miracles and visions that happened in our lives, we only knew him as Jesus. And I'm not disparaging that. I'm not saying you can't do that. For God the Father has chosen us. We didn't choose him. But what do you do with him choosing you, with him predestining you to his kingdom? We need to know the name of the son of the living God. He's the groom. We're the bride. We're going to a wedding. How can we be prepared for the wedding when we don't even know the name of the groom? His name is Yeshua. Google it. Find out. Ask. They'll tell you, but they'll tell you they use a translation of it that it's true to the meaning of his name. But they don't do that as they move on to other countries. Know the name of the Son of the living God and prepare for the end times. Prepare for the pre-tribulation rapture that you can be ready to go to the wedding feast at his father's house as the bride prepares herself. The name of the Son of the living God is Yeshua. Call upon his name, acknowledge his name, and prepare for his coming.